Hi, welcome to my YouTube channel and this is the second series on dynamic programming. So these problems are difficult and so please don't get discouraged if you can if you can't solve these problems under 45 minutes. For the record, I it took me more than an hour and two attempts to get this problem right. So yeah, let's get started. So here is the problem and I will pause here. You can pause here and look at the problem statement and I, and I will move on. So uh, for this kind of problem, the first step is whether this is dynamic programming problem or greedy problem. So for a greedy problem, you have, so for dynamic programming problem, you have to find the um, overlapping sub problems. And so, so um, let's see. So we can start with this. So our, oh, what is that? So our nums is one, five, and four. So here you pop one first, and here you pop the middle guy five first. Here you pop the last guy first, and then you record the the number of coins here. So this will be five, twenty, and twenty. And then you do the same thing, and see if you can find overlapping sub problems. Well, here, if you look at here, uh, like here, you are left with coin, uh, you are left with balloon four. Here, same thing. But then the number of coins for this guy is 25, and for this one is 24. For this guy, you, you are left with bal like balloon with five. But then your, and then your number of coins are still the same. Well, if you look at the problem, when you pop the balloon it disappears so that's what makes this problem a little bit challenging and if you start from here one five and four and and it, it is not obvious you can find overlapping sub problems so we have to think about this problem say from the backward so what is the issue here when you pop a balloon okay, so if you pop the balloon in the middle then the subsequent numbers, like subsequent subarrays, are different to the case where you pop the balloon sequentially. So you, like, say you pop the balloon in the first position, and then the second, and then the third. And so th that's what makes the problem difficult. And as for the recurrence relationship for this DP, we will be using substring. And and so and what should our DP? What should be our DP? So how should we define DP? So this one will have two states, so left and right. And we want to find the DP of say zero and so left will be zero and right will be the length of array. And so here DP of left and right, that's just the maximum coins you can collect by bursting all balloons from from the nums left to nums right. And our recurrence relationship will be this. So we basically basically we will be taking the maximum of all the balloon we can pop. So k will be from left left plus one and then right. So this is in Python notation. So k will be running from left plus one, left plus two, all the way to right minus one. And then you are taking the maximum of all this guy. But this this recurrence relationship is not actually true. If you try it on here you will see that um, this doesn't give you the right answer. So where is the issue coming from? And then the issue is coming from this guy. So nums k minus one times nums k times nums k plus one. Why is that? So here is my example. And so my nums array will be one, three, one, one, three, five, eight, and 10. And then because and then you, you put the um, two additional balloons with one painted on them. So from he at here and at here, and they are fixed. First, in that case, our nums should be this guy, one plus nums plus one. And then say we pop the balloon at third position, that's, so that's zero index. So this guy, you pop five. Then you'll be looking at DP of zero to three. Notice that here, 0 and 3 so this this guy and this guy are not in, 
ad inclusive and then here from here to here it will be tp of 3 and 6 so it makes sense right tp of 0 to 6 is just we are taking the maximum of tp of 0 comma 3 plus tp of 3 comma 6 like um so here yeah and notice that here i just gave you an example here we have a specific case where we pop this guy but we will be running so tp of 0 comma 6 will be this guy actually so we are running from k will be running from 1 to 6 i mean actually 1 to 5 so we'll be we'll be like popping this guy first or this guy first this guy first this guy first and this guy so here in our case we pop this guy first for this example so that's this so in that case let's focus on uh, this first subarray dp of 0 comma 3 then we have two cases we so dp of 0 comma 3 so we can pop this guy first or this guy first so if you pop this guy first then this equation is fine but if you pop this second guy first then this equation doesn't hold true because if you look at here if you if you pop the second one so norms 2 then you will have norms 1 times norms 2 times norms 3 but the issue is that norms 3 doesn't exist because that's this guy is already gone so how should you do this problem so how about you look at this problem from like the backward how about instead of popping a balloon we place the balloon into an empty list and then sequentially fill this entire empty array right so in this case you place this so initially you don't have anything here from one to five and then you put say you place this balloon with 10 at position 5 then the maximum coin you get is 1 times 10 times 1 so in that case you would have so dp of 0 to 5 that's from here that's this guy plus dp of 5 to 6 that's this one plus you'll be multiplying norms 0 times norms 5 times norms 6 and so this 0 and 6 so 0 can be left and 6 will be right so you see that it works this one works so norms so you you would have dp of zero so you would have dp of left comma k plus dp of k comma right plus norms of left times norms of k times norms of six so so far so good so how about dp of how about dp of zero comma five so we were working on dp of zero comma six with one example of with one specific case of placing a balloon into this position so dp of 0 comma 5 would be dp of 0 comma 3 plus dp of 3 comma 5 plus norms of 0 times norms of 3 times norms of 5 so this is correct and so we will be using a dp so our new recurrence relationship will be this guy dp of left comma right equals dp of left comma k plus dp of k comma right plus norms of left times norms of k times norms of right so and ju i just want to be precise here dp of 0 comma 5 is actually not equal to this you remember you have to take the maximum of dp of 0 comma k plus dp of k comma 5 plus norms of 0 times norms of k plus norms of 5 for all the k in all the k from 1 to 4 and we here in this case we just pick k equal to 3 for the illustration purpose like bottoms up approach so you have this dp array and you start with say dp of 3 comma 5 that is just for initially all these entries are set to 0 so dp of 3 comma 5 is just dp of 3 comma 4 plus dp of 4 comma 5 plus this guy and since this is just 0 yeah and same here so it's and then dp of 2 comma 5 is this guy so you are taking the maximum of this guy times this guy plus this guy plus some this product of nums or dp of 2 comma 4 plus this guy plus this guy plus another product of nums so let's look at this one carefully so dp of 2 plus dp of 2 comma 3 plus dp of 3 comma 5 
So this means that we place the first balloon at the third position. They will separate this dp of 2,5 into dp of 2,3 plus dp of 3,5 plus some product of coins. dp of 3, 2,3 is you know, 0. Uh, so why do you think this is? dp of 3,5 is we already calculated here. Here, this guy. So dp of 3,5 is just this is 0, this is 0 plus some number here. And so yeah, so this is what we are doing. We are basically expanding our search space and eventually we will have dp of 0, 0,5 and this will give us the right answer. So first approach is top down and so um, I'm, I'm using a Python and you can use this function. And then basically, um, yeah, when, so basically if you have right minus left equal, equal to one, then we return zero. That's this case, you know, two, two dp of two comma three, that's zero. And then, yeah, basically you do this and then you return this guy. So for me, I prefer the um, modern mobile approach because it's visually pleasing and it actually helps me to understand the problem. So this is the bottom up approach and basically the same thing here you have, you create a um, initialized DP matrix with all entries zero and then you basically fill out this entire matrix and then you return this, this guy. So let's look at the code and see how it works. The first approach, the top down approach. So let's run this. Yeah, so this one, this uh, top-down approach isn't really faster than, say, bottoms-up approach. So let's try bottoms-up. Bottoms-up would be much faster than this. Okay, so here's the bottom-up approach, and let's run this. Should be faster. Yep, so this is definitely much faster, and I, I, I actually prefer bottoms-up approach because you actually you actually can understand that like you can draw a um, DAG on this and see how all the um, entries in DP works so okay and that's it for this problem and if you if you have questions just write write a comment and I will write a response and okay and let's look at the next problem and then the next video will be next video will be on this problem actually so this one is um, slightly more difficult than this uh, but yeah the, the concept is still the same 